verse 1, chapter 1 of 1 John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we look upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ and we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Now on to verse 5. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. This is God's word. Please be seated. So once again, we praise the Lord because we are gathered in this beautiful place. It does not matter whether we are many or few in number. The important thing is the presence of God is with us. You heard a while ago the verse which was uh, quoted no, in our midst. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And I feel led actually before we expound 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, I feel led for us to read Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Eh, bala niyo mga utod, I have also been... You know that I do not believe in accidents, no? In a human sense, sa human level, of course, accidents happen. But in the eyes of God, of course, there is no such thing as an accident. Maybe he is in control of everything. I believe ang atong diri pag-worship sa Buena Park is, you know, part of God's good purposes for us. And I have been wondering, I've been trying to discern, ano ay han ang will sa ginoo? Para sa aton dere, it's important for us to know God's will, no? Kay what is important is not our agenda, not our purposes, but the purposes of God. As the Lord's Prayer says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. This is an outpost of the kingdom. Thy will be done. And I feel led to mention or to cite or to quote Colossians 3.16 because I believe this is part of God's will for us here at Buena Park. Anong hambal din sa Colossians 3 verse 16? Listen to this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Last week, actually, I mentioned na eh, na I felt impressed in my heart that the ka purpose ang inuo for our gathering here is really for His Word to dwell richly in our heart. And that is what we are doing and aside from that also singing songs of praise to him and of course in everything we do we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus and for the glory of his name because of our worship our hearts will grow in gratitude towards God for all the wonderful things that he has done for us 
Pero inang phrase niya, let the word dwell richly in our hearts. Isa ginaya sa pinaka-importante nga goals. Sa ginoo, will of God for us. What is important is not, you know, human opinion, human understanding. Kulong ito sa ginoo. That is why you will notice there is aton pagtipon-tipon every Sunday sa Buena Park, 3 o'clock, ang ginatagaan din natin niya emphasis, Word of God. Okay. That is why we are, we are going very slowly. Tatlo na ni, ikatatlo na ni nga sermon sa verse 5 pa lang sa 1 John. So you already have an idea how long this will take. Probably a year or so. No, bago ito ni matapos. Anyway, just by way of review, what is the purpose of this letter? Nga agin sulat ni ni First John. Digin kla ni 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 John the Apostle, no? Gin klaro niya na sa verse four. Hambal niya, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. So he is interested in our joy actually. Gusto niya nga malipay man kita sa Christian life. But where can that joy be found? <laughs> All of us are seeking for happiness, di ba? All human beings are. In a sense, that's normal or natural. Pero where can it be found? If I were to ask you, where can true joy and happiness be found? Kag kung balikan mo, dira sa verse 3, sa 1 John chapter 1, hamba niya, gin-proclaim niya ining mensahe about Jesus Christ, the word of life, who is eternal life, so that you may have fellowship with us. Indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Ang joy, ang joy gali, ang matutuwag na kalipay sa Christian life, sa kabuhi, makitaan in fellowship with God. So, ang unang pinaka-importante, dyan sa diri nga kalibutan, ang aton relasyon sa ginoo. Amo gina yun dapat unahon. And that is why you should not be surprised pag lambot mo dira sa verse 5, what is the message? Di ba lagi nung kapila ko na ginayagin stress? What is the message? The message which we have heard from Him and proclaimed to you. God! God is the message. Siya, gitya ang supreme. He should be the center of our mind, thoughts, and affection. And the message which we preach, our preaching, our sermons, should be primarily about God because the Bible is about God who wants to have fellowship with us and in whom we can have joy in and through fellowship with Him. So, kinang lang, God, gitya. Pero ang question subong, okay, we now know that joy can be found in fellowship with God. Okay, right? The question is, what kind of God is this? Ining Diyos who is calling us to fellowship with Him. What kind of God is this? This is very important. Because, kapila ko na ginhambal, our understanding of God will affect not only our attitude, it will affect not only our conduct, it will af affect our approach to a lot of things, even sa worship, even sa the way you treat people, the way you live your life in all aspects of your life. Your understanding of God will affect all of that. Hindi ko nga gusto balikan kapila na kong maghatag mga example. But if you remember, aari na lang, if you think of God as someone who is lax, lenient, and you know, na who does not care about righteousness and all that, you will take him for granted and you will not treat him with reverence and awe. Malimtan mo na nang ginahambal sa Bible nga, fear God! Okay? So, there is uh, verse 5, ang hambal sa Bible, the God who calls us to fellowship. The God who is the message of the Bible is light. Na initalum ni actually this is you know this is a very deep and important topic the fact that God is light hambal dira sa verse 5 if you have your bibles with you God is light and in him is no darkness at all now you will notice something about the way John writes no Ang role ko as a preacher and teacher of, the God's, of God's Word is siyempre to explain. So I will have a lot of explaining to do in order for you to understand better the meaning of God's Word. The problem is, 
style ni, amo niya ang approach ni John when he writes there. Unlike Paul, kung basahon mo ang mga epistles ni Paul, Paul is very analytical. Ang description niya sa kay John, he is somewhat mystical. May pagka, more siya, how do I say this, more on the poetic side. <laughs> Di ba lang mga poets, they use figures of speech, they use metaphors, they use symbols. Ang mga abogado, yeah, like, uh, what is this, Paul, ang ilaya, they use arguments, they use analysis. So, lain ang approach ni Juan, ni, ni, ni John. And, but he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Kagdari, in in God is light, in whom there is absolutely no darkness, this is actually a metaphor. This is a metaphor. In, 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 this is a figure of speech. This is, how, how do you say this? This is a symbol. Nga, when you think of light, ang light represents who God is. Ang mga characteristics and qualities of light will give you an idea of what God is or who God is. Okay. Sa dira pa lang, I will have to do this ha, if we are to understand who God is. What is one characteristic of light? pag ukta mag context. Well, all I can say is light is pure. Light is something that not only drives away the darkness, but there is absolutely no darkness in it. In fact, When there is a brownout, what do you do? Of course, sindi ka sang kandila or gamit ka flashlight. And the function of the light, of course, is to drive away the darkness. And you will, of course, notice and understand that ang darkness kagang light, they can have no agreement or mixture with one another. They are opposites. Okay. That just at least gives you an idea of who God is. Nga it has something to do with purity and it has something to do with driving away the darkness. Nga wala gidda siya yung mixture or agreement or anything to do with the darkness. So, back again to the question. What does it mean when the Bible says God is light? Dari masulot ang context. When we say context, lang tawon mo ang other verses in the passage which might give you an idea of what these words mean. So let's read. This is the message which we have heard from him, verse 5, because in chapter 1, so first John, ha, that God is light, in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Tandaan ka na, ha? If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Tandaan ka na, Paglambot mo sa verse uh, 8, if we say we have no sin, sin, again mention na naman, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, to cut the long story short, is it not obvious that the darkness refers to sin and unrighteousness kung basahon mo ang context? But in that case, What is the opposite of sin and unrighteousness? Holiness. Therefore, logically speaking, what does the word God is light, what does the phrase God is light mean? God, God is light, what does it mean? I think the answer is obvious, di ba? To say that God is light, which is the opposite of darkness, which is the opposite of sin and unrighteousness, is to say God is holy and God is righteous. Which leads me once again to a very important point. Nga kinahanglan, hindi pa lang kamaturan, nga bago ko lang in-mentionar sa inyo, this is a very much neglected truth today. Kaya yung mga tao, they take God for granted. They forget that the greatest, sa, sa understanding ko, ha, the greatest attribute of God is not even love. Kibot ka mo, no? Kibot ka mo? The greatest attribute of God is not even love. It is holiness. Of course, there is a first John did mention our man that God is love. But before that is mentioned, humble there is a chapter 1 pa lang, God is light. It comes first. God is holy. And you know what? Kung magbasa ka sa Old Testament, many times you will encounter, number of times you will encounter this, this statement. 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Inang three times gin repeat, that is for the sake of emphasis. To stress the fact that God is not only holy, He is perfectly holy. Holy, holy, holy. But don't you notice that there is no similar phrase with respect to love? Wala. Yes, the Bible says God is love. Pero wala nag-mention ng Bible, God is love, love, love. But the Bible did say, holy, holy, holy. This is very important. Because naiintindihan ko, let's make this relevant, ha? i-apply ta sa subong na ito ng panahon. I mentioned a while ago, I noticed that many people, Christians even, they take God for granted. Ang attitude nila towards God is not one of reverence and awe. Nadula na itong fear of the Lord. Kapos ila masunggot sa ginoo. They treat God as if He were a Jimmy or Santa Claus. Why is that? Because they forgot that God is holy. Balaan. And you know what? If you only consider the love of God and forget about His holiness, ma-misinterpret mo and ma-misunderstand mo ang love sa Gino. The love of God, because He is holy, is a holy love. But silingon, it is not mere sentimentalism. Now, that might be a big word for many of us. Inap lang, ang understanding sa iba dati, pasensyaan na lang niya sa ginoo. He will overlook it. He will just ignore it because He is love. But God's love should be understood in the context of His holiness. Yes, God is love. Wala ginanakon, wala ginakwestiyon, mga utod. But even prior to His being love, as far as greatness of attributes is concerned, He is first and foremost holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Amo nang kinanglan, ang ka, amo nang arang niya sa heart ko, burden niya sa heart ko, I wish people, especially of course Christians, would remember the fact nga ining atong Diyos, yes, praise the Lord, He is a God of love, but even before that, He is a God of holiness. Diba si Mamang Kotka? Diba no, subong kong balaan siya. Na, mo na pamangkot sa sa iban. Well, there are a lot of implications. Kagbubak ang mga implications. Now, I was hoping that I will be preaching a short message. But let us see. No? Kay naghatag ko din sa akong research, sa akong preparation, there are at least four implications. Magsiling ka implications, consequences. Consequences of the truth that God is holy. Number one, tatag ko sa inyo ha. Since God is holy, He is perfectly righteous and sinless. Amo na nga, balga gina sa verse 5, there is absolutely no darkness in Him. Hindi mo gid siya yung makitaan sang sala. He can do no wrong. He is never wrong. There is no sin absolutely in Him. Light, light, di ba? Ang kasanag, no darkness can mix with light. Light is pure. Ari ang isa ka amazing verse. By the way, I do not know if you will have discussion later on. I have prepared what is this? Notes nga pang ihatag. Ipanghatag ko karoon sa mga discussion leaders which will guide you. Okay? Go. 15. Verse 15. Let me read this. Behold, God puts no trust in His holy ones and the heavens are not pure in His sight. Tiripulin yung versikulo. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? ang balsang ginoo, not even the holy ones. Bisan ang mga holy nga anghel, mga balaan nga angeles, wala ka, although again, this is in a sense poetic, no? pero ang punto is, okay, ang habal niya din, he puts no trust in his holy ones. As if to say nga, bisan mga balaan na sila nga angeles, may depekto man na sila gapon, as far as I am, compared to me. And the heavens are not pure in His sight. Pisan ang kalangitan, ang langit mismo. Hindi putli siya tumangan. Eh, well, 
let me ask you, is there in your imagination and conception, can there be anything more pure than the heavens themselves? Pero humbles diri, humbles diri si Job, not even the heavens are pure or clean in his sight. Anong bot ko si Limon? Anong bot si Limon di sa Biblia? Do parehas lang ni Bala sa bulan, nga kasanag, sa mga bituon, nga kasanag, pero bisan ano pa na sila kasanag, kung itupad mo sila sa adlaw, wala na ina kasanag. Kaya ang adlaw ya, grabe ginaya kasanag. So the Bible is saying, God is so holy, so sinless, so pure, that you can compare nothing to Him as far as holiness is concerned. Tamaan di niya kasanag sa pagkabalaan sa ginoo, nga ang pagkabalaan sa ibang nga mga butang, even the most holy creatures compared to us, mga angels, in a sense, <laughs> compared to God, you can even say that they are not holy at all. There is only one who is holy, God, and God alone. Amo ni Hambal sa Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 13. You who are of purer eyes than to see even and cannot look at wrong. Grabe, hindi ang kabalaan sa ginoo nga hindi siya yakatulog sa kasalanan. And that is why, di ba may mga verses sa Bible nga, when we sin, when we backslide, God hides His face away from us. Why? Because He is holy. We have to understand that about our God so that we will not take Him for granted kag para hindi kita mag-abusar. Okay, we find it very easy to live unholy lives. Di ba? Why do we do that? Because we forget who our God is. Who is our God? The holy God who cannot even look at evil. Who cannot look at wrong. Now, implication number two. Amo itong number one. Implication number two. Since God is holy, and listen to this because this concerns all of us, He demands perfection from us. Grabe na yung punto. Because God is holy, He demands perfection from us. This should destroy all ideas in our minds that God is a lenient God. No! He demands perfection. Oh, let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. It is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. You've heard that before, di ba? Matthew chapter 5. 48. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Is perfect Because God is holy, what He demands from us is perfection. Oh, are you James chapter 2 verse 10. This refers to the perfect, the, this refers to the holy law of the Lord. Ang iya mga kasuguan, commandments. Are you hambal sa Biblia? Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point, has become guilty of all of it. God demands perfection, so much so, nga bisan sundun mo ang tanan niya nga layi, tanan ba lang Ten Commandments? Magpalpak ka lang sa isa, daw parihas lang na, nga guba, mugin guba mo tanan. Nga ah, because the standard of God is not 99.9%. The standard of God is, 100%, which leads me to the third implication na kabugat. If that is the case, since God is holy, and as a result, He demands perfection, that means, wala sang maluwas paagi sa iya kaugalingon nga kusog kag maayong buhat. It follows. It's just logical. Aring hambal sa Biblia. For all have sinned and fall short or come short of the glory of God. Tanan na kasala, kag nahulog, wala na kalampot, sa himaya, kag pagkabalahan sa Diyos. And Isaiah 64, 6 says, We have all become like one who is unclean. Tanan kita mahigko sa mata sa ginoo, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment, or kung sa ibang translation, filthy rags. Now listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Ang hambal sa Biblia, sa mata niya sa ginawa, tanang kita mahigko, 
Bisan ang imo maayong buhat kung ipresentar mo na iya sa Ginoo, daw parehas lang na sa mahigko nga trapo. Nga bisan ano pa nang siya kaayo kung ikomparar mo na iya sa pagkabalaan sa Ginoo, hindi na iya kapasar. Di ba it follows? Now, don't get me wrong. Before the eyes of our fellow men, as far as society is concerned, ang imo maayong buhat maayo gina iya makabulig maka amo na ganing nga gitawag siya maayo po at nagaresulta siya sa kayuhan pero ang ginestoryahan ta diya hindi iya ang kayuhan nga ginpakita mo sa imo kaingot ang ginestoryahan ta di ang kayuhan nga pwede mo ipresentar sa Ginoo you can you can never you cannot present any righteousness to God because God demands perfection and we are sinners which leads me to the fourth and last implication bago kita magkatto sa conclusion by the way ano oras ko nagsugod mga nga sobra na ko diya try pa minuto sa kon reload of feeling ko ya do 5 minutes pa man lang ko gambal okay okay god is holy Last implication, the fourth. Since God is holy, He will not condone sin. Do you understand the meaning of condone? He will not ignore. He will not, you know, just overlook it. He will not say, it's alright. Kag tirigid dyan, hindi ko naproblemahan sa aton ng mga human beings. We think that the God will just overlook. No, He will not. You want proof of that? In the Bible, Exodus 34, verses 6 to 7. Okay. In your cell phones, cell phones na lang yung nakita. Ang ko, print Bibles, wala na yung dyan. Modern na yung dyan. 21st century na yung dyan sa buong. Okay. Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 to 7. Katahong sino yung versikulo ha? And you know, kanami, isang sugod niya. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord. A God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Bao katahum ang aton galigino o mapalanggaon din maluluyon. Gapatawad din siya. No question. There is no question that God is a forgiving and compassionate God. But listen to the next statement. After saying all that, anong hambal sa Biblia? Are you reading? But who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation? Yes, God is a forgiving God. But He will by no means clear the guilty, which simply means He will not let sin go unpunished. He will punish sin. And that leads to a question. Kung amo na gali na ang gito, tungod balaan siya, he demands perfection, he is perfectly sinless, he demands perfection, and he will always, without fail, punish sin. Paano na lang kita sumong maluwas? Di makasakala kita. Kag hindi man lang gali kita maka, makasarang magpakita sa righteousness before God, baby. Bisang galing natin good works, filthy ranks. Paano na lang kita? And in fact, brothers and sisters, amo man ang pamangkot ni Job. So in your Bibles, as I said, the ah, word of God. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. So damo, give to the verses na isay. Job chapter 24, 25, verses 4 to 6. Anong hambal sa Biblia? Job chapter 25, verses 4 to 6. Hambal ni Job. Or hambal ni Rat. How then can man be in the right before God? How can he who is born of woman be pure? Behold, even the moon is not bright, and the stars are not pure in his eyes. How much less man who is a maggot, and the son of man who is a worm? Kita nga mga katawan, mga uod lang kita. Kabuk! Kasakit man isa sa Biblia, magambal, no? This is biblical language. 
Ha? This is biblical language. The son of man who is a maggot, who is a worm. How can he who is born of woman be pure? How can he be right before God? Paano kita makatindog sa tubangan sa balahan na Diyos? Kita nga mga makasasala. Kita nga nagrebelde sa iya, lali. Kita nga nagsikway sa iya. Kita nga mas palanggapan nato ng kugalino nato kaysa sa Diyos. Paano kita makatubag sa iya? Paano kita kakadto sa langit kaya tuto siya? How can we be saved? Because we are dealing with the Holy God. How will we be joyful kaya nagambal na kita nga ang joy galing makita in fellowship with Him? But how can we have fellowship with Him? He is light. We are darkness. Kagdira, masunod, ang katakong nga kamatuuran nga makitaan mo sa verse 7 sa 1 John chapter 1. Yes, God is holy. Yes, He will punish sin. Yes, He will not overlook and ignore sin. Kaya pala, ano siya mo? Righteous siya. But praise the Lord, 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 says, The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Are you not thankful that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins? Kagari pa minsan ang tao ang uto ang damit. Wala ka bala nagpaminsar. Nga ito kasimple man. Ito kasimple man lang na magpatawad. Nga hindi na daw. Nga hindi may himos ang Diyos daw. Nga hindi na lang siya magambal. O, oh, napakasala ka. O, oh, forgiven ka. Why did he have to send Jesus Christ to that? Have you ever thought of that? Why does God not simply forgive? Why does God have to send His Son to die on the cross for our sins? Why? 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 Answer! Because God is holy. Because He cannot allow His justice and His holiness to be compromised. Nakasala ka, therefore, the penalty for sin must be paid. Kaya kung hindi na mabayran, makompromise ang iyong holiness, He will no longer become. The essence of His being, God, is holiness. Hindi niya na iya pwede yung matapingan ng iya pagkabalaan. Hindi pwede. You have sinned. The world has sinned. Human beings have sinned. The wages of sin is? Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is? Then the penalty must be paid. Because God is holy. Hindi na pwede nga. Hindi pwede nga. Oh, forgiven ka lang ah. Ang muna kasimple para sa ginoo? No. No. The penalty must be paid. But God knows na kung kitaya ang mabayad sina, forever kita mabayad. Sintir, no? Have you ever thought why hell is everlasting? Because the penalty is so infinite that it needs eternity to pay it. And in fact, gano'y isang eternity, hindi mo gaming, hindi mo mong yapon mabayran. Grabe, no? Hindi ko na lang nakapagpagaluman. But it's in the Bible, everlasting punishment. And God knows that if He will impose the penalty on you, wala na. Wala na kaluwasan. Wala na forgiveness. But what did God do? He found a way. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Impossible para sa ito na maluwas. But with God, possible. What did He do? Someone else paid it for us. And in fact, kung padaluban mo, it was God Himself who paid it in the person of His Son. Ang nangagapati kita sa Trinity. Because actually, what happened was, God the Father sent His Son, who is the perfect representation of the Father, who is God Himself, to die on the cross and paid the penalty for sin. Pero don't, don't you realize nga, it is necessary, the key word here is necessary, It is necessary for Christ to pay the penalty for the sake of holiness. Hindi mo gitya. Pwede ipahigat ang holiness. God loves you. God will save you. God will forgive you. But the penalty must be paid. Amuna, I will end with this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23. Word of God na naman kita. Let the word of God dwell richly in our heart without the shedding of blood. There is no Forgiveness. 
no remission of sins, no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And so we will close this message with gratitude and thankfulness in our hearts. Lord, thank you that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And if you are someone struggling with guilt and with fear that you can never pay off God, please be comforted and encouraged by the fact that God sent His Son to pay the penalty for your sins. He, the sinless, spotless, lamb without blemish, took your place on the cross. If you believe in Him, all your sins will be forgiven. And Ari, ang mystery of mysteries, you who are unholy will now be able to boldly stand in the presence of God. Unholy as you are, because the righteousness and holiness and blood of Jesus Christ covers you so that instead of running away from the Father in fear, you will say to Him, My Father, I love you because you first loved me and demonstrated that you love your love for me by sending your Son to die for me. Hallelujah! Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your holy love. Thank you, O Lord, that even though we cannot pay the penalty for our sins, even though we are so holy and wicked, and there is, humanly speaking, no salvation for us, it is impossible with man. But you, O Lord, in your wisdom, in your love and compassion, found a way to forgive and save us without compromising your holiness. And that wonderful and glorious way was by sending your Son to shed His blood on the cross so that everyone who believes in Him as their Lord and personal Savior will have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. I pray for each and every one of us that gratitude will just increase in our heart, O oh Lord, in our hearts, for the grace you have shown us. Kung may ari, nariginoo, na wala pa nakabaton sa kaluwasan, sa imo libre na kaluwasan, which is by grace, I pray that you will open the eyes of the heart of that person so that he or she will receive the Lord Jesus Christ into his heart and find forgiveness of sins so that he too may have fellowship with you and with the Father and he too may boldly stand in the presence of the Holy God reveling and basking in the light of the love and grace of God. In Jesus' precious name and the people of God say, Amen. Amen.